Should I put a Tesla solar roof on my house? While I do have a number of small-scale solar projects, and check out some of our vids on that, going full solar for my house and charging my car is not something I've done to date, as it's been hard to justify the cost-benefit where I live. With the latest Tesla solar panels, roof, and power wall coming to market, we went and visited Tesla, gathered some facts, and sat down and did the math to try and answer the question, should I put Tesla solar on my house? Is now the time? All right, so we've been doing doing the maths and uh, wanted to try and see if this is really something that would work well for my house. So we've selected two options. Of course, Tesla has the two options. They've got one option that says, hey, just uh, go do solar panels on your roof. roof. It's the more traditional route. Um, the alternate option is to use Tesla's solar roof, which is tiles that have built-in solar panels in it. Looks a little bit more like uh, roof tiles rather than uh, looking like you've got panels on your roof. Before I go through said maths, let's compare these two systems. As I mentioned, one is your traditional approach to solar, that is panels that you mount somewhere that conveniently faces the sun. The most obvious location, and where all the Tesla press photos show, is on top of your roof. But I assume, as with similar systems, it's also possible to mount them on other structures, or even freestanding. Tesla calls their flagship approach the solar roof, which is both a roof and a solar system combined into an interconnecting series of roof tiles. While more expensive, the advantage of this approach is that it creates a very clean aesthetic. Both of these systems can be optionally augmented by Tesla's Powerwall, essentially a small version of their car battery pack that is used to store power for when there is no sun. One of the challenges we find comparing costs with Tesla is that they tend to overly simplify the details whilst simultaneously combining things like incentives and savings offsets. I understand the intent here is to make something that is inherently complex a little easier to understand, but this makes it difficult to get a true understanding of the cost without having Tesla come out and do the engineering. For the sake of this video, we have taken some generalized guidance from our visit to Tesla and have attempted to extrapolate out our best estimate of how these systems would cost on my house. But do bear in mind that these figures are not based on any specific Tesla price quote and probably are not 100% accurate. Okay, so we have a couple of different systems here. So this one, this 20,000 bucks is the roof tear off uh, in the install. We have the panels there for 50,000 bucks. This $3,000 is because it's a 24 kilowatt system. It's a lot of power, it's almost 100 amps. So Eric needs a new service panel in both yep. options there, yep. plus other things that go into that. And then uh, there's a 26% federal ITC tax credit that is only until uh, tw uh, this year of uh, 2020. Next year, it's gonna be 22% and then it's gone forever yep. for residential. So make sure if you are thinking about this, do it quickly. Um, because this is when it was it's installed, and you know how Tesla has a tendency to wait on their stuff. Uh, down here is the Tesla roof. So this one is has the tear off. We have the same service panel upgrades, twenty six percent, and so we're at sixty three thousand. So we're within about four thousand uh, bucks. The two systems. Couple of really important details and caveats about this one. The Tesla's website shows the incentive across the entirety of the solar roof. Yeah. I don't know if that really would happen with uh, Uncle Sam. I don't know if it would get evaluated that way, but we did it the way Tesla did it on their website. Yeah, so we were a little concerned about that because let's say you're using a third of the roof or half of the roof as the solar side. I have a feeling that Uncle Sam will probably say half of that is this way, but it could be that there's some loophole where Tesla is saying, actually, the whole solar system is, uh, is a raceway for your solar system, and so the whole system qualifies. Te Tesla being Tesla and assuming what's easiest for them. Yeah, so make sure to check with your CPA before. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. <laughs> All right, so, so baseline cost, because I have to have something to compare this against. Yep, what, what if I did nothing? What, what does the next 20 years look like if I did nothing? So I took data for the last year. This is actual data, kilowatts consumed per day, kilowatt hours consumed per day um, throughout the year. And uh, if I so, extrapolate that out based on my eight cents a kilowatt hour where I currently live, I can see what my current monthly cost is spread out across the entire year. Total cost of the year then in electricity, $2,300.24. If I go and factor that out over a five year, 10 year, 20 year period, it equates to $46,000 uh, over the course of 20 years in order to do electricity on my house, assuming the cost of electricity doesn't go up. But if I take use of these systems, Abe, which are both 24 kilowatts, so we could just do a single set of math against both of them, how did that actually price out? 
Well, so what we did, and just so to clarify for Eric, uh, what Eric was saying, these numbers, the 106, 103, those are the number of kilowatt hours in that day. Uh, so average daily. Yeah. Average daily. Yeah. And so uh, what we did is we found out how many suns there were for each one of the months of the year on average for the day. What's the sun? Oh, it's 1,000 watts per meter squared per day. So it's a, essentially one peak hour of your solar system. So if you have a one kilowatt solar system, uh, a two kilowatt, two peak hours would give you two kilowatt hours during that day. So in this case, what we did is we took the suns, we multiplied it times uh, 24 kilowatts, um, to be able to give us that. Now, Eric yep. actually only needs 20 kilowatts, but because he has lots of trees, mm -hmm. uh, we factored in a rough basis of around 20% loss. Yeah. Um, so his system is 20% bigger than it needs to be because of the trees. So factor in the shade. Yeah. So we actually did a bunch of, like, we crunched a bunch of numbers, and so we simplified it so that this these numbers go to 24 versus 20, and then we took that number and we multiplied it times 8 cents, and so we subtracted the 106 minus the 36 times the suns times the number of uh, days in a, in a month, 31, uh, times 8 cents a kilowatt. And then we have this amount of cost or savings. So he spent, will have to spend $117.41 during January, but he would save $152.17 in August. It's a good thing we have net metering in Washington State. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so cost per year, if you sum all that up, is really darn near zero. It's probably just a rounding error in our math. We're, we're very, very close to having a net throughout the entire year of zero cost. Yeah, this is about 3% yeah. because we did everything on the board first before using Excel, and then it got really painful, so we did it on Excel for this top half. Yep. <laughs> so. Um, okay, so... So does this make sense? I mean, what, what does this equate to? So I've got a $59,000 approach, a $63,000 approach, and then I've got a $46,000 if I do nothing. But I have to go and add back in that 20 grand that I'd have to do for a new roof in the next couple of years anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'd really be looking at 66 grand as my baseline cost. So 66 grand, both of these numbers are a little bit less than 66 grand. If I were to do option number two at 63 grand, it'd be a payback period of about 19 years. It's not super, super compelling, but it is still positive, and I am still now generating my own power. I'm basically generating all the electricity that I need for my house and my car. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It is cool. Um, if I did the more traditional approach, it's a little bit better, um, and that's probably about 17 years or so payoff. Um, now, these don't factor in financing. Uh, which, of course, would increase the cost of them. But I guess the flip side of that is I also have to look at uh, what's the cost of electricity going to do because it's probably not going to stay at exactly $0.08 cents a kilowatt hour for the next 20 years. Right. I don't know. Other thoughts? So I'm thinking the same thing. So it, they are really close. It seems like um, you could hedge your bets by by having the solar system. You can, act, you can feel good about having solar. You can feel good that you're driving on, you know, essentially – you know, off the sun for your car, which is great. Uh, it's reducing a ton of CO2 and a bunch of, um, uh, you're re eliminating things on the grid. I, so you I have- do, I don't do CO2 anyways. I've got a Tesla, man. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So that has to come from somewhere, right? So, so oh, right. This, <laughs> so this is a way to be able to have a really good environmental impact yeah. and it's still positive. So it's better, in both cases that way but it's also there is a little bit of thing here it's a little you know they did say we asked the sales guy hey what how long will your roof last and he said oh you know till it'll last longer than the life of your building will i mean just to say maybe we could get two roofs on there you know you could potentially save an additional twenty thousand if it was you know good for 40 years or 50 years it's and that seems it's reasonable possible. if it's a real high it's, composite. It's possible for yeah, the, that would be the, the solar roof option. Yeah. Um, so there's a potential that you may have an additional, you know, twenty thousand dollars in savings from that. Yeah. Um, it seems like a like it could work. It could be good, but it is also sixty three thousand dollars. So. <laughs> it is very expensive. <laughs> so, very expensive. So that's uh, my take, Eric. Uh, uh, you I, should do I, it <laughs> if you have lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure some of you have much smaller electricity needs than I do, uh, which means the math on this will look a little different. We might go do Abe's house next. We'll see where that goes. Um, uh, what do you think? Should I go and uh, put solar in my house? Comment down below.
what he said. Tell us what you think in the comments. Also, if you like this video and want to see more, be sure to press on that thumbs up YouTube thingy and subscribe. Visit our website, freelearner.how, and use my Tesla referral code below, which will get you a $250 discount on Tesla Solar.